A satellite 36,000 kilometers above Earth has just sent a laser signal, so weak it uses less power than a fridge light, yet it delivered data speeds five times faster than Starlink. This is the result of China's new 2 what laser communication test from geostationary orbit. In this video, we'll explore how such a low-power laser produced such high speeds and why this breakthrough could transform the future of satellite communications. The most striking part of this breakthrough is how it overturns long-held assumptions about geostationary satellites and high-speed communications. For years, researchers believed that achieving fast, stable data rates from 36,000 kilometers using extremely low power was practically impossible. The reason is simple. That distance is enormous. A signal must travel through layers of atmosphere, absorb distortion, lose strength, and still reach a ground receiver with enough clarity to decode. Yet a team of scientists from Peking University and the Chinese Academy of Sciences showed that this challenge can be solved in a way no one predicted. They successfully transmitted a 1 gigabit per second data stream using a 2 watt laser a power level so low it's often compared to a household LED bulb or a small appliance indicator light. What makes this remarkable is not just the speed, but the efficiency. Typically, spacecraft operating over similar distances require hundreds of watts of radio frequency power to maintain a stable link. Laser communication, however, focuses energy into much narrower beams. Even more surprising is how this demonstration compares with modern satellite internet networks. Starlink, for example, is currently one of the world's fastest and most publicized systems, delivering a median download speed of around 67 megabits per second according to recent performance reports. It achieves this by deploying thousands of low-Earth orbit satellites, each orbiting roughly 550 kilometers above Earth. These satellites compensate for their low altitude by using many ground stations, inter-satellite links, and continuous handover to maintain coverage. But China's single test from geostationary orbit produced speeds five times faster than that. And because geo satellites remain fixed over one location, they can cover an entire continent without constant motion or handovers. This introduces a completely different architecture for global broadband. One that requires fewer satellites, lower launch mass, and lower long-term maintenance. Another critical element is the validation by multiple independent sources. Reports from South China Morning Post, Acta Optica Sinica, and Interesting Engineering confirmed not just the data rate, but the stability of the test. The secret to this achievement lies in an advanced optical system that solves the biggest problem with long-distance laser communication, atmospheric distortion. A laser sent from 36,000 kilometers must penetrate Earth's atmosphere, which constantly shifts due to temperature differences, humidity, wind, and turbulence. These distortions scatter and reshape the laser beam, causing the signal to break apart into multiple modes, each arriving with different timing, shape, and strength. Without correction, the ground station receives a scrambled signal that is nearly impossible to decode. China addressed this challenge using a dual technology solution known as AOMDR Synergy. The first component, Adaptive Optics, AO, is designed to correct the shape of incoming wave fronts in real time. In this experiment, the ground receiver used a 357 micro mirror array, each mirror adjusting thousands of times per second. These tiny mirrors bend and reshape the warped laser signal undoing much of the atmospheric damage before the data ever reaches the decoding stage. But adaptive optics alone is not enough for such extreme distances. That's where the second component, Mode Diversity Reception, MDR, comes in. Instead of treating the incoming signal as a single beam, the system splits it into several parallel paths using a multi-plane light converter, MPLC. The MPLC separated the signal into eight channels, each representing a different spatial mode affected differently by the atmosphere. A real-time algorithm then evaluates all eight channels and selects the three most coherent and stable ones, merging them into a cleaner combined signal. This dramatically increases the chance of receiving usable data even if some paths are distorted. According to an analysis reported by Interesting Engineering, 
this AOMDR synergy increased the usable signal rate from 72% to 91.1%, a massive jump that directly enabled a 1 gigabit per second data stream using only 2 watts. Acta Optica Sinica further explained that this stability is what made such a long-distance test viable. Another key element is that the system avoids spectrum congestion. Unlike RF communications, which require licenses, strict regulation, and often face spectrum limitations, optical links operate in a virtually uncongested part of the spectrum. The implications of this demonstration extend far beyond just faster internet speeds. This breakthrough represents a new path for satellite communications, one that could shift the direction of global space infrastructure over the next decade. The first major impact is on large-scale satellite internet architecture. The dominant trend today revolves around LEO constellations, where companies deploy thousands of satellites to achieve global coverage. While this model works well, it is resource-intensive. Each satellite must be replaced every few years. Coverage depends on large numbers, and the system consumes significant power. The geo-laser approach flips this logic. With a small set of high-precision geostationary satellites, each capable of high throughput, a fully functional network could require far fewer satellites overall. This lowers long-term operational cost and reduces orbital congestion. An increasing concern as more countries and companies deploy satellites. A system based on geo-optical links could provide stable, wide-area coverage with minimal hardware refresh cycles and lower environmental impact on orbital space. Another important dimension involves scientific communication and deep space missions. High-speed data transfer is essential for upcoming lunar programs, Mars missions, asteroid research, and future exploration projects. Laser communication is ideal for these missions because it offers high bandwidth with significantly lower energy requirements. A third area where this breakthrough matters is infrastructure resilience. Optical systems are not subject to the same interference challenges as RF systems. They are also far more precise, enabling point-to-point -point links that reduce the risk of accidental signal overlap or atmospheric noise. This could make space communication networks more flexible and dependable during natural disruptions or environmental interference. Another aspect worth noting is the energy efficiency. A 2-watt laser delivering gigabit speeds is a dramatic improvement compared with traditional RF systems that require much higher power to sustain links over similar distances. This reduction in onboard power demand allows satellites to dedicate more energy to other tasks, such as scientific instruments, onboard computing, or wider communication coverage. The only major challenge ahead is scaling the system. Expanding optical ground stations, standardizing pointing technologies, and developing cloud-tolerant backup channels. What this experiment proves is simple but groundbreaking. High-speed laser communication from geostationary orbit is no longer theoretical. It's real, efficient, and scalable. A 2-watt laser delivering gigabit data across 36,000 kilometers reshapes how we imagine global connectivity, deep space missions, and future satellite networks. If expanded, this technology could reduce satellite congestion boost data capacity, and unlock entirely new communication architectures. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinews.com. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.